In today's episode, we're going to learn how to install and use Soulborn scripts for architectural visualization projects. We're going to start by going to Nail Plevin's website. I'm going to leave the link in the description. Click the Art Assets link, then the Soulborn button. Scroll down to Find Installer and download the latest version. In this page, we can also find the description of each one of the scripts. To install the script, you need to go to the main 3ds Max folder in Program Files, Autodesk, 3ds Max, and copy all the zip content to the main 3ds Max folder. If you get an override warning, select Yes. After installing Soulborn Script, let's open 3ds Max. The first thing we need to do is to add the scripts icon to a toolbar. If you don't know how to create a toolbar, you can see my toolbars video in this link. It is also really important to select the script with UI at the end to have access to the user interface. Soulborn is a collection of 85 different scripts, but for this video, we're going to focus on 10 that can help us to speed up our ArchBase projects. I'm going to leave the list in the description. The first one is Soulborn Script Lister. It will allow us to access all scripts from a drop-down menu. You just need to select the script and click Apply. It's important to use the Run as UI option to access the user interface. Pivot Placer is one of my favorites. It can help us to quickly place the object Pivot using 27 different points. We just need to select the object and double-click one of the points. We can select Top, Bottom, Center, Side, or even Corners. We can keep all the settings as default. If at any point you find that the points are inverted or is not working properly, you can reset the object edge form. This can help to solve most issues with this script. With Object Attacher, we can quickly attach all the selected objects. Just select the objects you want to attach and click the Apply button. There are only a few options to control. With Mode, we can select if we want the attachment to be Poly, Mesh, Spline, or Auto Detect. I recommend using Auto Detect. It works really well most of the time. We can also check Show Warning if we want a warning to confirm the action. I don't like to have this activated, but it can be helpful in some situations. And lastly, Keep Original Objects. This option is going to create a copy of the original object and then attach them. We need to keep in mind that if we are attaching hundreds or thousands of objects, the process can take several minutes or even crash mats. One last advice with this script is to always save before attaching and if 3ds Max is unresponsive, give it a few extra minutes before killing the process. Object Detacher can quickly detach all elements of the selected object. You can keep all settings as default. There are a couple of settings we can check or uncheck depending on the results we want. The first one, keep wireframe color. If it's selected, we're going to keep the current wireframe color instead of creating a new color per element. The select result is going to select all the detached elements after we detach them. And delete original objects, it's going to remove from the scene the original objects. This is an important option, as sometimes we want to keep a copy of the original objects. In that case, you can uncheck this option. Once you finish with the settings, Select the object you want to detach and click Apply. It's also important to mention that this is going to detach each element of the selected object. In this example, you can see that each of the elements of the pot has been detached and not the whole pot. This is something to take in consideration as a large number of elements can take a long time to detach. Layer Cleaner can help us to clean all empty layers. Just click the Apply button and all the empty layers will be removed. This script is especially useful if we are importing AutoCAD files into 3ds Max and we want to remove all the additional layers that came with CAD files. Name Manager is another handy script to keep a correct organization and object naming of our projects. It can help us to rename objects in the scene using different functions. I like to use rename plus a pen number, keeping a pre-name for elements like accessories, structural or furniture, and then using a base name. The append section is going to control the numbers at the end of the name. In this example, it starts at number 1, moving one number at a time with a pad of 2. 
which means that the first object is 0, 01, then 0, 02, then 0, 03. The item section can help us to indicate what we want to rename. I like to manually select the objects, but you can also use all scene objects if all the objects will have a similar name. Once you finish, click apply. We can see that the first pod has a different name than the second pod. If we change the pad number to one and click apply, we're going to remove the zero from the numbering at the end of the name. Rename works the same way, but without numbers. So all the selected objects will have the same name. For different naming conventions, we also have the option to select uppercase, lowercase, or even camel case. There are many different functions to select that can match our naming conventions. As you can see, these scripts can help us to speed up many tasks and adjustments needed for ArchBase. In part number two of the video, we're going to talk about the other five useful Solborn scripts for ArchBase. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any question, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.